Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the landing at Cape Helles, located on the Gallipoli Peninsula in Adrianople Vilayet, Ottoman Empire, between British commander Aylmer Hunter Weston and his combined French and British forces of more than 21,000 men, against the Ottoman commanders Halil Sami Bey and Mahmoud Sabri Bey, with only 4,500 defenders, on April 25th and 26th, 1915. In an effort to take down the Ottoman forts from behind, Anzac forces planned to land on the European side of the peninsula and approach the forts using cover. The hope was that by approaching this way, the fort may be less well defended. The plan was to land the 86th Brigade with supporting units to secure the beach. Once the beaches were secured, it land enough forces to take the forts. And British High Command saw this as a no-brainer and were confident of success. Sadly, this would not be true as gross incompetence would plague the Allied forces. The British and French forces under Major General Aimler Hunter Weston suffered greatly in their landing as the area became a butcher's ground, costing a tremendous amount of loss even as they brought overwhelming forces to bear against the small Ottoman defense force. General Hunter Weston started the assault with all the support of the British Royal Navy. Their large cannons laid a hammering on the Ottoman forces. Allied forces' goal was to reach Akibaba and the forts overlooking Dardanelles that day. The brave men of the 1st Battalion Royal Dublin Fusiliers rode their way to shore, while the SS River Clyde itself dumped 2,000 men, part of the Royal Munster Fusiliers not far away. The Royal Navy, in fact, had not harmed the Ottomans at all, and as the River Clyde and the rowboats of the first Dubliners landed, they were lit up by enemy machine gun fire, with many units suffering more than 70% losses. The SS River Clyde itself was stuck on the beach, with many of the men trapped inside trying to avoid being killed by the Ottoman machine guns. Unfortunately, later that day, General Napier, who was in charge of the initial invasion, was killed himself trying to get his men ashore and the safety. General Hunter Weston did not bother to watch out over the initial invasion itself, so sure of his success with the Royal Navy bombardment that without waiting for word of the initial wave, he ordered another force to land on the beaches. History repeated itself and once again more Allied troops were butchered. It wasn't until General Hamilton, who was on board the HMS Queen Elizabeth, saw what happened. He took over command from Hunter Weston and ordered him to move all of his forces to another beach and bypass these Ottoman defenses. Eventually, Hunter Weston ordered the rest of his forces to abandon the beach that they had landed on and move on. This left a thousand soldiers pinned down inside the SS River Clyde and into positions that they were hiding in. It wasn't until later that night that they were able to make their attempt to successfully get away from that position. Allied forces lost more than 6,500 men killed and wounded, while it is unknown how many the Ottomans lost. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.